news for the kids out there. It's not random, okay? Okay, soccer fans, soccer. Fuck that joke. Uh, Sucks, because now I have another password I have to remember. Five minutes go by, I realize I'm fighting my own fucking shadow. <laughs> <laughs> this man needs no introduction. Give it up for Luke Swiderski. Uh, my name is Luke Swiderski, and I've been doing stand-up for about four and a half months. Has anyone here ever been so lazy that you watch an infomercial instead of getting off the couch to change the channel? I grew up in Ocala, Florida. One time I watched an Appliance Direct infomercial for like four hours. If I could describe myself in one word, uh, how about if I describe it in a paragraph? Sure. <laughs> I would just... That little guy, he sure gets into it. He's like standing next to a washing machine. He's like... Do you know what has to happen to get your clothes clean? No, I do not, little Asian man in jean shorts. I would describe my comedy as somewhat absurdist, but the more that I'm developing, the more like honest that I've become and personally revealing. Uh, I like to talk about the things that have happened to me in my life that other people would identify with and think is funny. Next time someone tells me to make myself at home, I'm going to strip completely naked and take a shit with the bathroom door open. <laughs> Growing up, I didn't see comedy as a career choice. I always thought that I wanted to do something like in science or uh, biology because I liked the outdoors and things like that. I ended up going to UCF for computer science. And then uh, in the early 2000s, when digital media became an option, I started doing digital media, and that is what my degree is in. I'm like, you got an extra tampon? Is it a super? Because things are bad down there. No, really, it looks like a Quentin Tarantino movie. Um, all of my friends are very supportive of my comedy. Most of my friends are people that I've met in the restaurant industry and the service industry. And I'm always doing stupid things at work and saying ridiculous things that you should probably never say in public. But for the most part, everyone has always been very supportive of my comedy and they always come out to see me. And uh, I kind of probably have developed my sense of humor over the years working in restaurants and working in bars and being in that kind of scene. In fact, I've lived in Puerto Rican neighborhoods for so long, now I cover my car with Puerto Rico flag stickers. I was always a class clown. Uh, I went to Catholic school from kindergarten to seventh grade. I got expelled from Catholic school in seventh grade. When I get home, I got something for you. And I was like, yeah. And I started to text her back. But in my phone, the name Laura is right next to the name Landlord. <laughs> so now my landlord thinks I want to fuck him in the ass behind Chuck E. Cheese in his car on Thursday night. Uh, Five years, I see myself hopefully touring nationally, whether it be B clubs or A clubs. I hope to be doing stand up in a meaningful way in a big market. And five years is a long time. I've only been doing stand up for five months. So I would like to think that I could either be making a living at stand up or making a living writing for television or writing screenplays or doing something in show business related to comedy. What happens in Vegas? Yeah, it was funny the first 50,000 times I heard it. My favorite part of being on stage is hearing other people identify with the thoughts that I have contemplated and thought were funny, and it's reciprocated by the audience's laughter. You know you want to see Luke again. If there's anything that I see of myself that, I, that sets me apart from other comics, I feel like that I'm always writing new material. I'm always going to every open mic every night of the week and trying out my new material. Yeah, um, I'm not even going to bother explaining why my room looks like it does.
Um, I actually made like a list here some time ago of objectives, things to do when I wake up, and it just never happens. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you're gonna get mad at me, dog, especially since I brought you out here myself. But our two top finalists with perfect scores, we gotta go ahead and give it up for our top two, Josh Dawes and Luke Swiderski. Uh, the obstacles I face as a comic are mostly like financial, mostly spending money on driving to an open mic for two people in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I'm driving out to open mics every night of the week. And I ain't gonna lie, both of y'all hilarious. Both of y'all both got perfect scores. And you both got half of the crowd to evenly go against each other. So I think it is only fair if they split it 50-50. In the short term, I want to do as best as I can in Orlando. Um, that means going to open mic still every night, but also getting gigs at Bonkers, hopefully featuring at Bonkers, getting gigs at the Improv, which just started happening for me maybe a month and a half ago. I but just... put a dot, dot, dot after that, because this bitch is to be continued. <laughs> Every time I go on stage, I always have anxiety and butterflies and I'm nervous how my set's going to go. Am I going to remember all my punchlines? Am I going to remember all my tags? Every night that I go on stage, I'm always nervous. I'm nervous if I go on at an open mic. I'm still nervous going on at open mics. So I think that's just gonna be like that the rest of my life. All right, that's my time, everyone. Thanks so much.